Well, um, it's a you know I I have a a position paper on the website. I don't know if you've read it on inflammatory bowel disease. What it does, it gives nutritional recommendations for people with Crohn's and colitis, varying the recommendations whether their disease is active or whether their disease is quiescent. If the disease is active and they're still having inflammation or bleeding, then we don't have them eat raw vegetables, only cooked. But once they're in better control, we can start to eat first blended raw vegetables um, and then eventually raw juices and raw salads chewed, but not at the beginning if they have inflammation, if they have too much yeah, inflammation going on because it can, it can irritate the lining of the digestive tract. We want things to be cooked, to be sorted, with the fibers to be softened. I also recommend people with um, inflammatory bowel disease and with, with a combination of Crohn's and colitis, we don't recommend people have nutritional yeast in their diet. Are you aware of that? So nutritional yeast can be a contributor to the disease process. So we don't want to use that as a flavoring, but for other people, it's okay. And then um, we do recommend people drink vegetable juice once or twice a day that has a mixture of one third carrot or beet and one third green cruciferous, mostly bok choy and cabbage and one third um, lettuce. So they have, let's say, you know, six, six ounces of this juice twice a day. And they're eating a diet with um, making sure when they do eat raw vegetables, for example, they have a, they're very mindful of liquefying every mouthful that they chew everything to a complete liquid to minimize the effect of raw fiber on the, cup, on the gut wall. So if, if they're okay enough to be in control and sometimes they're, you know, we're weaning them off medication or sometimes they're on an anti roasa or some kind of, they're on some medication that's um, relatively like Pentasa or Roa that's mild. And, but what, what the goal is to get them off the more serious biologics um, like Remicade, which can increase later life risk of cancer. We want them on more mild, more um, helpful things, and then we can gradually improve raw food in their diet. And then to enhance the anti-inflammatory effects of the diet, sometimes a lot of people with Crohn's or colitis will fast two to three days every four to six weeks. Chronic, continually giving the bowel rest, the bowel some rest every month to keep it chronically, chronically anti-inflammatory effects. And then we give them a high dose fish oil, not the one, not my EPA DHA because of the EPA component is not big enough, but I, cause the, it's the EPA that has more anti-inflammatory effects. So I have um, the mega EPA that I, that I have on the web available on the website for people with depression, autoimmune disease or, or inflammatory bowel disease. And the people are usually taking four of those a day to get the EPA component very high for the anti-inflammatory effects. As well as some people are using high dose probiotics as well, in addition to the high dose, high EPA fish oils. That said, we modify the diet, you know, based on individual needs. And sometimes people, as we said, reading more cooked and pureed foods. And some people are just chewing eating regular food because they've healed to that point and they can accommodate the regular diet a regular nutritarian diet. They don't need to be so cooked and everything to be pureed and, and heated and everything. So we can eventually move people to a normal, a normal nutritarian diet once we get their condition under control.